Hello and welcome to the Incandescent Health and Wellness Magazine radio show, TV show, laughter yoga show with Slash Coleman who is an amazing Richmonder. You're from Richmond? I am, born and raised in Richmond. Awesome, awesome. I met Slash when I looked at uh, meetups recently and I saw laughter yoga. I'm like, what is that? And I, he, his reputation preceded him. A friend of mine had told me about him months ago, so I checked it out. I was intrigued. So tell us, what is laughter yoga? So laughter yoga is this, it's kind of a relatively new form of mindfulness in terms of um, the whole scene of mindfulness. It came on the scene in 1995. There's only been one book written about it, um, which Dr. Madangataria, the founder of laughter yoga, wrote. And it was just published here in the United States this past year. So not a lot is really known about it, even though... When he started in 1995, the first laughter club, they met to tell jokes, and he soon found that to get the sustained health benefits of laughter, you had to laugh for more than 10 minutes, and jokes just don't do it. And I know for me, when I'm watching like a, my favorite comedian on TV or even a comedy at a movie theater, um, I might think it's the funniest thing in the world, but I might not even laugh out loud. And so to get 10 minutes, like it's he created these laughter clubs where we don't depend on comedy or jokes or humor to do that laughing. And... Um, the Laughter Club I started a year and a half ago is part of a network of about 8,000 um, laughter clubs worldwide, free social laughter clubs, where people get to, together and meet and laugh um, using the principles of laughter yoga, which is uh, laughter games and deep yoga breathing. And it's a part of a network of thousands in thousands of, thousands of countries now. There's 18,000 alone in, uh, in India. Um, so that's kind of the gist of, of what laughter yoga is. And it's really complex, but so simple, I think, as you've described it. So tell us your journey into laughter yoga, and then we'll unpack kind of what this is. So four years ago, I was on my national book tour, and my right lung mysteriously collapsed. And I went to the hospital for a month, and after three surgeries, when I was being released, the doctor said that laughter would help my lung to heal. And over the course of the next year, um, I became really isolated I felt like to have the, I had like a flu for a year. When you have the flu, you just don't feel like being around people. But when I did want to be around people, I Googled laughter in Richmond, ended up in a really expensive improv comedy class that I hated because it felt like a comedy competition. You had to say the funniest thing. I thought it was going to be like that show on TV, Whose Line Is It Anyway, where you just like, you're naturally funny and everyone laughs and you do great, but like, it, it didn't feel that way at all. It gave me anxiety to try to come up with things so quick when I wasn't feeling good about myself. And it also felt like a performance um, as well, which I wasn't really into doing at the time. Um, so I dropped out of class, lost my money, Googled laughter in Richmond again, and there was this really odd thing called laughter yoga. I had always done yoga, so I figured I'll go try this laughter yoga thing. It was being taught at a church by a counselor, and um, I went to the first session, there were about 12 of us there, and uh, I fell in love with it. There was an intimacy that was um, that I felt in the room with the other people. I guess what I was really feeling was feeling really vulnerable around laughing with strangers. And it kind of, you know, I, I didn't know what was going on at the time. All I knew was it made me feel good. It made my, my lung feel good. It expanded my lungs, like the doctor said, and I felt connected to people. So Yeah, and that's what Incandescent Health and Wellness Magazine, my real mission of it is to just explore all these different ideas yeah. with the idea that of self-love, right? You spoke yeah. about that in class tonight in one of the exercises, you hug yourself because yeah. we don't love ourselves enough. I love that exercise. Yeah. And having the courage to really step out and show up because I, re I know I, this is my second class. The first one I was like, all right, I think I can do this for one more minute. I may I may not make it two minutes. Yeah. but And then yeah. you make it through the whole thing. And as yeah. a Kundalini yoga teacher, they teach you to like, you can keep just do one more, <laughs> come back or from 100 one more time, you know, or something yeah. like that. And that idea that you can keep going, you know, yeah. and so that to me is one of the powerful things about this, laughing for five minutes and what yeah. makes you laugh. And it's not funny. It's so how do you define laughter now? Um, we live in a, a culture now that we're um, just so ready to put on the boxing gloves and react and get angry. And for any, like I think about what people... Uh, postal workers must deal with you know they're in there's a huge line and someone's yelling at them and they're just ready to put in the box and be like if you don't like it just go somewhere else um and so dr Gattari had us do this very interesting thing where we had to laugh with strangers for 30 days straight 
and you would just go up to a stranger and we would have to film it and put it on the WhatsApp. Everyone that he was involved with was on the WhatsApp doing that um, one minute for one minute of laughter for world peace. And um, you go up to a stranger and say, hey, I know I don't know you, but would you mind laughing with me for a minute? And they're like, and some of them think it's kind of strange, but no one has ever said no. And they will laugh with me even when I'm filming it. And so we, he's, he's had thousands of people all over the world do that. And what I realized in when he was saying that was that, you know, on the flip side of that with what he's doing and how we define laughter and what laughter means to me now, people may, it's true, people may be really quick to want to pull in the box clothes, but if given the opportunity, they'll laugh even quicker. Yeah. But most people don't know that they have that option at all. And so it's it's this close, you know, anger or laughter. And so it's really helped me see that um, mm. to, to define laughter in a, in a completely new way. Because especially for me when people, when I've tried other um, types of, um, I guess, mindfulness, there always seems to be that vibe of like some kind of, religious component that is a turnoff. But like in laughter yoga, we don't care where you came from, what happened to you, what your race is, your gender, how old you are. It's it's really world peace through laughter. Like we just come together and we laugh and we feel changed in some way through the sharing of this oxygen intake. Can we, as human beings, choose to be positive? Mm -hmm. Right? Because we're sort of trained not to be. We're and, and it's part of the culture to figure out what's wrong yeah. quite often, especially if you're sort of gen genetically disposed to being anxious. Other cultural things, you know, what's wrong, is all, as opposed to just being trained from childhood what's right. Right. So that's the research I'm curious about, and I hope we can stay in touch as you evolve in this. Yeah. Which brings me to my next question. So you've been doing this for a year and a half. What's next? So I'm looking to work with smaller groups. Um, one of the groups that I'm looking to work with, I, I launched a pilot program for veterans at the Veterans Hospital this past year, and through the process, I just realized the hospital setting isn't a place where people want to do anything, much less like do laughter yoga. Ideal in the ideal world, yeah, laughter yoga belongs there. Um, and so we're relaunching it in September um, for calling it tentatively um, Laughter Yoga Warriors. And it's going to be open to all first responders and their families. So military, veterans, their families, their friends, policemen, firemen, EMTs, ambulance drivers, all those. And we're, we're looking to take it into their venues where they're comfortable. So doing it at the police station, doing it at town hall, doing it at the fire station, where they can feel comfortable doing those type of, those type of events. So I'm really looking to get really niche with smaller groups and to kind of combine communities. And so in the past year, the the way that you become a member of RV Laugh Club is you come to one of the sessions and then you're a member for life. There are no dues, there are no fees, you're just a member for life. And so I'm looking to take those members and take them with me as I go work with the veterans or I go into hospitals and and I go into senior centers. And so those are some of the areas where I'm looking, looking at veterans, senior centers, um, and hospitals to really just where the work and the laughter can be of a great, to me, a, a greater value to me. Oh, wow, sense, sense. that's brilliant. I love that because you're, you're layering it. Hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, and the idea that you would bring those families together to laugh because there's a lot of tragedy yeah. that they deal with all the time. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, I can't hmm. wait to hear, yeah. you know, in a year and a half from now <laughs> what, yeah. uh, where you are with it. And uh, I'm excited to check out Laughter Yoga in Los Angeles, where okay. I'll be headed. Oh, yeah. And just we'll just keep the conversation going and make sure that everyone knows how to get in touch with you so that you can share the... Okay. Laughter. That sounds good. All right, so we're gonna end. Uh, we're gonna end our session with slash with the, the way he ends the exercises. Yeah, sure. So why don't you lead us in the final exercise? All right. Want to go with me? Oh God. All right. Very, very good. good. Very, very good. good. Yay! Yay. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>